This is something of a follow up to my last video, the female power fantasy. That video incensed a lot of people in part because of my rather harsh now and then comparisons of female film stars, in part because I dared suggest that Harvey Weinstein was entitled to a fair trial, but mostly because of the offhanded quip that I made at the beginning about women being generally mentally inept. Now, if I'm being truly honest, that was said the way it was said for shock value. I just felt like making a rantier style of video than my usual, but however rude and shocking and offensive that statement was, the question remains, is it true? I engaged with a few people in the comment section, uh, a pastime that I don't particularly enjoy, and one interaction stood out to me. It was a bit of a long exchange, but at one point I basically said to this guy that he seemed like quite a steadfast egalitarian fellow and appeared to be letting those a priori egalitarian ideals cloud his judgment in light of the clear, undeniable facts. To which he replied, quote, If saying women are physically inferior to men, but mentally equal, as far as we know, makes me an egalitarian, then so be it, end quote. The problem, of course, is that as far as we know, based on all the evidence, this isn't the case. He is completely, objectively wrong. And I think this one sentence basically cuts to the core of a larger issue, which is, what justifies us to make one claim but not another? If he's going to admit that women are physically inferior to men, on what evidentiary basis is he making this admission? What justifies him in making this assessment of male and female physical ability? There are effectively two ways we could make this assessment, quantitatively and qualitatively. For quantitative, we could look at male versus female outcomes in sport. For instance, we could look at something like the results of the 2017 London Marathon and see that the woman who won would only just scrape into the top 20th position for men. We can take these statistics and quantitatively say that based on an average of the top 20 times, women are 11% slower than men at long distance running. Qualitatively, we could examine gender differences in human physiology and say that women have a slightly different musculoskeletal structure and that as a result, for the same height and body mass, men have more muscle. So generally speaking, yeah, women are physically inferior to men and we have both qualitative and quantitative evidence to back that claim. Sport is a topic that I've spoken about before because it is just such an obvious example of sex differences. Even the national women's soccer team gets flogged by under 15 boys. And I'm sure we don't need to go back over that vanity match between Serena Williams and Carsten Brash. But it's everywhere you look, really. I mean, military entry standards, studies which show that the muscle fibres themselves are different. It is hardly controversial to say that women are physically weaker than men, basically across the board. But what about mental aptitude? Well, quantitatively, women remain a minority in mentally taxing STEM fields despite a two-to-one hiring bias in their favour. They make up only a few percent of professional software developers, and the rates of female computer engineers are even more dismal. Even in fields that women overwhelmingly dominate, like nursing, they are proportionally less likely to pursue certain rigorous specialties like nurse anaesthetist, or publish nursing literature in journals. They account for only a tiny portion of patents that are filed. They account for less than 1% of chess grandmasters and show almost equally poor representation in video games as the mental requirements of the genre becomes more taxing. When it comes to actual IQ tests, we've all seen those graphs purporting to show that males have wider variants, ergo more geniuses but also more dummies with the same gender average. However, as Turt Flinging Monkey has covered in some of his videos, this data mostly comes from tests assessing pre-adolescent boys and girls who undergo peak brain development at different stages. When we look at studies with sample groups that actually include adolescents up to the age of 16 and a half, that 
conventionally understood trend that everyone loves to cite basically disappears and gives way to separate overlapping distributions with a clear male advantage. By the time we get to the suspiciously lesser known studies which assess fully developed adults, we see a very clear distinction in average IQ between the genders. And believe it or not, these results are actually in spite of the fact that the WAIS and WISC-R and other intelligence tests are constructed with intentional bias to try and eliminate any recognisable sex differences. Now, qualitatively, men's brains have a larger volume, somewhere on the order of 10%. Men have more front-to-back neural connections. Men have more grey matter, which correlates with cognitive performance. There are sex differences in areas of the brain, such as the hippocampus, which processes memory and spatial reasoning. Differences in hormone levels like dopamine, serotonin, cortisol and testosterone, which affects not just cognitive function, but also the ability to stay calm and maintain that cognitive function in stressful situations. So I have to ask, what is the evidentiary basis to make the claim that women are mentally equal to men as far as we know? There, there is no shortage of data here. We have more than enough qualitative and quantitative evidence to make a general assessment of male versus female mental aptitude. I know that this is frightfully upsetting for a lot of people to hear, but the types of evidence that you would accept as straight up common sense showing women's physical inferiority are the exact same types of qualitative and quantitative evidence that also shows women are mentally inferior. I am sorry, but you cannot freely accept one set of evidence and then fiercely reject the other set of evidence just because you don't like it, especially in the same fucking sentence. The quality of evidence used to make the first claim is the same as that rejected by the second claim. No, you can't reasonably accept one without the other. You can accept the facts of reality as they stand. You can reject them entirely and live in fucking la-la fantasy land where there is apparently no difference between the sexes, but you can't have it both ways. You can't just flagrantly cherry-pick the evidence that happens to suit your egalitarian agenda at the time. Now, this guy in the comments section ultimately kept trying to bring the argument back to the idea that women aren't dumb, just disinterested, and success does not equal intelligence or vice versa. Right. And I am totally as smart as Einstein, I'm just disinterested in revolutionising physics. Look, at some point, we have to assess people by their actual achievements. We can't just go around pretending that everyone is exactly the same, with the same genius level potential, and then invent all manner of cockamamie fantastical excuses to explain away the different outcomes we observe. At the end of the day, we have to work with the information we have. And that information? I'm sorry, but in the same way that the London Marathon results are indicative of physical ability, the data that we have amassed about preferred fields of study and job engagement can also serve as a yardstick for mental ability. In fact, if we break down academic fields of study by the average IQ estimated from SAT entry scores and then graph that against the percentage of female participation for each subject, we see a very clear trend. Cognitive intelligence and success within certain fields are absolutely connected. And that trend further correlates with the so-called gender preferences we observe. I think that this graph rather neatly highlights the problem that to the extent one continues to argue women aren't dumb, just disinterested, that would still beg the question, why? Say that you ignore all the evidence you've just seen and stringently stick to the egalitarian explanation that men and women are equally intelligent and just have innately different preferences. So that's why we see the different outcomes. It's all explained by gender preferences and nothing more. Sure, okay, great. But why? Why do women have these different preferences? Beyond that, 
Why do their preferences so consistently correlate to a clear avoidance of activities that require higher mental investment? I've seen some people try to claim that it's because women aren't as interested in bragging rights or competing in the status hierarchy. But frankly, I don't think that's true. Women are all about status and power. They love telegraphing it through diamond rings, expensive fashionable clothes, bragging about which social circles they move through. Status is not the primary issue here. It seems to be very specifically about an avoidance of mental expenditure. If I had to guess, I would say that it is for the exact same reason that at a stance of six foot four, I am not an Olympic gymnast. We tend to gravitate towards and enjoy things that we have a natural aptitude for. Even ignoring everything that we currently know about quantitative IQ and qualitative brain differences, explaining these disparate outcomes as gender preferences ultimately still lands you at the same foregone conclusion. That women on average do not have the same aptitude for these activities and are therefore less likely than men to show a preference for and pursue these activities. Gender preferences. Yes, how convenient that women prefer activities which don't require as much brain power. Now, obviously, an individual should be judged by their individual merits. There are smart women and they deserve to be judged by their own personal achievements rather than being stereotyped with a group average. I absolutely believe that. I believe in meritocracy. But that doesn't mean that we can't make a general assessment of demographic trends based on the aggregate information we do have available. And based on that aggregate information, just like sports, women fall behind men in virtually every pursuit that hinges on cognitive ability, from esports to STEM, even to fields like nursing that they overwhelmingly dominate but proportionally underperform in. It really doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to figure out why there are hardly any female rocket scientists. I'll give you a hint. It's not because of sexist bowling shirts. It's because demographically, men are objectively smarter than women. Period. Regardless of the truth that underlies them, it would appear that these kind of general assessments are a huge hang-up for people. There's always a lot of concern trolling and tone policing about the fact that it's improper to make generalisations. Specifically, there seemed to be a push among certain commenters in my last video to isolate and quarantine any assessment of these romantic comedies as only being indicative of the quote-unquote third-wave feminist agenda. Right, right, right. It's all feminism. It's all the shadowy elites pulling the strings. Nothing to do with women. Move along. Nothing to see here. Hashtag not all women. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't recall saying anything about all women, but in terms of demographic trends, this blame-it-all-on-feminism attitude ignores the foundational fact that regular, everyday women are indeed the primary market consuming this media. At least half of the women in my office are avid fans of Sex and the City. Eat, Pray, Love was on the New York Times bestseller list for 187 weeks. As big a piece of shit as it was, How To Be Single tripled its budget at the box office. The other woman multiplied its budget by a factor of five. To put that into perspective, it was more successful at the worldwide box office than every film Adam Sandler has ever made bar one. When we look at the box office numbers, the ratios of females going to see these rom-coms greatly overshadows the ratio of women going to see female Ghostbusters or female Star Wars. You can argue that it's all part of the Hollywood feminist agenda, but in this case, their so-called agenda seems to be pandering to the exact wants and desires of their audience. Their audience made up of regular, everyday women. 
Nobody is saying all women, but these media trends are indicative of the general demographic trends in taste that regular everyday women have. And whatever you try to blame on the executives at the top, these women are ultimately responsible for keeping the momentum of that trend profitable as paying audience members. I could go on indefinitely correcting and clarifying points, but I think the community reaction to these points themselves was rather interesting. Sexist, misogynist, angry virgin loser, who hurt you? It doesn't matter that they aren't feminists or perhaps even self-professed anti-SJWs. Make no mistake, these people are every bit as driven by identity politics as the rest. They hear something that they don't like, something considered wrong think or blasphemy according to their egalitarian ideology, and regardless of whether it's true, their immediate visceral reaction is slander and othering. (sighs) Look, an honest appraisal of the facts, regardless of how uncomfortable those facts may be, does not automatically make one a hater of women. In fact, despite the dogmatically sanctioned approval from these very same anti-SJW ideologues, I don't even hate feminism. Sharks fucking eat people. I don't hate sharks. They are fascinating creatures. So are feminists. For the most part, the crazy shit that feminists do and say has zero bearing on my life. Family courts? I'm not fucking married. Politicisation of domestic chores? I live alone. Slut walks and Melania Trump's shoes? I just don't really care. I stay out of the shark infested water and I don't get bitten. My interest in feminism and women more broadly, yes, they are connected whether you like it or not, is purely academic. I want to know what makes women tick. I want to know how feminism, which is basically politicised female nature, is rationalised as an external ideology in complete contradiction of the observable facts and evidence it claims to be based on. I want to know how men willingly dupe themselves into going along with that irrational female political ideology. But I have no interest in hating or defeating anyone just dispassionately understanding them as a marine biologist would a great white shark.